Good morning, everyone. Um, warmly welcome to Hang On. Uh, my name is Andreas, uh, and I have my colleague here. And your name is? Petter Tarefos. Yeah. Uh, we will hold this uh, webinar for you today. Um, just a brief background. Um, Petter, will you start with you? Yes. Uh, I'm the CEO and one of the owner of, of uh, Hang On Group. And I work as export manager for Hang On, so I'm uh, traveling around quite uh, much in a normal year, not in this COVID-19 year, no. but. Then we are here. Yeah. So the subject for today will be uh, fill the line and modern production philosophy. And that's uh, really something we love to talk about efficiency and actually been on our agenda for a long time and uh, what we will talk to you uh, about today will be some tools to analyze and measure efficiency and we'll also introduce a calculation tool how you can measure uh, and calculate the effects of, of different actions or for improving efficiency uh, we will give you a short overview of our hanging system and also uh, a short uh, intro to our sales representatives uh, in the end. Correct. So uh, let's start. Yes. We go over to the presentation. So fill the line. What do we mean by that? In short, maximize number of correctly coated products per hour. Doesn't seem sounds that difficult. No, it's not rocket science, but no. uh, sometimes in a paint shop it can be a little bit difficult. It's it's not easy, uh, I would say, uh, because in a in a painting shop it's a complex process and uh, short lead times, especially for job coaters. Uh, difficult to plan etc <clears throat> so it's not easy uh, but it pays off if you start working with it absolutely and today we will show the benefits you will have from filling the line and actually get out the maximum number of correctly coated items per hour yeah and uh, we state it's a production philosophy and what we mean is an overall mindset that should rule all the operations in a coating coating line uh, and it's it's uh, focus on uh, process efficiency and with such it relates to to uh, lean manufacturing which most of you have heard i think but is uh, <coughs> uh, yeah, the, the, the practice that was developed in, in Japan uh, um, and is uh, used all over the world uh, to, to make production effective. And we will pick up uh, two tools from, from lean manufacturing. And the first one uh, is how to measure uh, productivity. And there is a measure called OEE overall equipment effectiveness <clears throat> which is a well accepted uh, measure to to, uh, to to calculate the uh, productivity <clears throat> in in a coating line or production line and then we will bring in a, a tool which actually helps us understand the number and what the losses are why we are not that productive now this sounds like we are turning into lean consultants. Oh no, we no, are not. No, we are not. Uh, that's not the intention because uh, for sure uh, we know a little bit uh, from our own work and, and it's an internal process and it takes actually a uh, very long time to be, yeah, ex excel in it. <clears throat> but we think this is a future uh, within the coating industry to that no matter what you call it, uh, uh, that there will be a focus on efficiency. And we have uh, practiced this our own uh, 
in our own production. We have a quite big production here in, in Sweden and we started one year ago and it's more or less exactly the same thing we advocate here where you have to, to rise the, the efficiency. Uh, and we think it's quite modern as we uh, state in, in the headline uh, because coating lines are not becoming <coughs> less expensive. That's not the trend. Uh, and then you simply have to work with the uh, efficiency. It is. Yes. So uh, a short video now here to just give you a crash course to what uh, lean manufacturing and OEE is. We are sorry, uh, we got uh, information that the sound didn't work. Uh, but we will send out a link to the video so you can hear it. But actually, all the essential stuff you could visually see. Uh, so if we take the OE and the six, six big losses and how it relates to what we call fill the line, you have uh, uh, an illustration in front of you now. And uh, <clears throat> if we start looking at the timeline, uh, you see that uh, we have 24 
hours to play with in the top. Uh, and then you always only measure the OE from what you plan. So if, if you have uh, two shifts, uh, you don't calculate the theoretical 24 hours or three shifts. <clears throat> then you have uh, three three kinds of, uh, or actually six losses, but the OE is made up of the availability, performance, and quality. And then you have losses <clears throat> in in within these three categories. And. Uh, What we say here that maximize number of correctly coded products per hour, that's actually goes in in all these sectors here, both the availability, performance and quality. Uh, so that is equal to the losses you are making in the time. So the OE value is the net production time you have compared to the plan time <coughs> in this line. So uh, Andreas, in the coating industry, what losses can we see in, in productivity? Yeah, let's uh, have a look at it. Um, if we look at the six big losses, this is just an example of losses you have actually. Mm -hmm. And I believe that um, all and everyone who have a line should uh, take some time and go through this because mm. it's it's really important. Uh, one is that we have line breakdowns due to ma bad maintenance or worn out equipment, so to speak. And mm. uh, we have downtime due to missing paint, hangers or um, other material that yep. we should have for our production. Uh, we have the setup time for color changes and new products. Yep. It definitely affects. We have breaks longer than 10 minutes. For instance, lunch breaks, etc. Absolutely. So this is the process failure part and the setup time and adjustment. Mm. Uh, if we talk about the three main groups in the six yep. losses. Uh, from that, we have a short line stops. Uh, actually bad production planning. Mm. Uh, we have palette gap, gaps to visualizing the, the planning in the line. And uh, I'm quite sure that you are all aware what the palette gap is. Is the gap you put into the line could be half a meter or a meter between different palettes. Yeah. And then you have the low hanging density. And that could be that the batches are too small. You actually decide to hang it with single hooks then mm. to use a frame, for example. It can also be that you have a too high speed on your line, which means that the operators doesn't have time to fill the line in, in, uh, in density. And here we should maybe make an important uh, remark that in the six big losses, it says reduced production speed. Mm. And what do we mean with speed? With speed is speed for us is the density. So it's we have bad density, uh, just a few items hanging on the conveyor where you can utilize the the, the um, height, for example, for much yeah. more items. Then of course the speed on the line is also part of it, but it's the total output per hour that that uh, is meant by speed. Yeah. So. Uh, these three sections correspond to the idle time and short stops and the reduced production speed. The next part is, um, for example, per treatment not clean or correctly set up. It can be nozzles that are clogged. It can be uh, worn out nozzles. It can be a uh, too low uh, amount of uh, chemicals in the bath. Uh, the ovens are not clean or they don't have the right curing temperature, yeah. for example. Uh, it can be bad grounding that leads to um, it's more difficult to paint objects, mm. definitely. And then, of course, not correctly hanged items. Yeah. Uh, Could be a, a cavity which where the pretreatment liquid doesn't pour out, etc. Yeah, or it can be hanged in a difficult way so that you can't do a proper application of the yeah. of the product. Yeah. 
So this corresponds to the scrapping process and the startup losses. Yeah. And and uh, how does the OE number then look in the coating industry? And uh, this is just based from our experience. It's not science, but uh, we are in 40 markets and we see a lot of coating lines and this is what we do every day. So we have tried to estimate the different factors here. So for the availability, which again, when we look at it, the, the biggest losses you have there is the startup, uh, you have breaks and you have color changes. And then our estimation is that typically you are between 60 and 85 percent. Mm -hmm. You lose that much of the planned time from the beginning. Uh, if we move over to the performance part, here we see the, a wide gap. Mm. Uh, and 5 to 15 percent of this uh, makes up the short stops that you will have in some form. Uh, the rest is speed and mostly the, the hanging density yeah. here. And finally, the quality part will maybe vary, but, but it's, it will not be the most important factor. Although, of course, uh, quality uh, claims etc. can be very costly and important, that's, that's for sure. So if we take uh, typical numbers mm -hmm. and place us somewhere in between, and let's say we go with an availability of 70%, and a performance of 60%, which is, from our experience, uh, pretty good, uh, and a quality of 98%. Then we are looking at an OEE number of somewhere at 41 or 40%. Mm. And here we, we must stress that it looks a lot different. If you are a job coder or an OEM with large volumes, few items, you have a much easier life to, to, to be efficient. And our point is really to, to use this to understand what improvements you can use in your line. Uh, as a reference in, in the video, they, they mentioned that the word class OEE all over all types of production process is 85%. You never, you can't reach higher than that. And, and uh, we think that will be very difficult to do in, in a coating line and we, we are lower. <clears throat> but again, the, the important thing is what changes can we do? And with most potential is the speed factor. Or Sorry, hang hanging density. Then. Yeah, mm -hmm. hanging density. So Andreas, if we try to illustrate how it can look on some of your visit out in the world and take a real case. We will do our best, definitely. Uh, this is a case from a customer that we have and uh, the picture on the left side shows actually how it looked like when we were there the first time or our colleagues was there. The picture on the right side shows the items when they were hanged up in, in a very good way. And that was after uh, it, we have been there. So um, first of all, we were, yeah, we are looking into how much productivity increase can we have. And in this um, example, we increased the productivity of 270%, which is of course enormous amount. Mm. Uh, look, if we are looking into the OE, um, then we were on a, when we had did, done all the work there, we estimate that we had an OE number of 70%. And um, that compared to the earlier estimation of 25%. Yeah. So it's... Um, yeah. And here we, we have just said that the, 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 the right picture represents 100% the maximum speed you can reach on this line. And that all the other factors in the OE was 70%, which yeah. was the average we calculated. Correct. But a huge difference there. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And this we see in many lines all over the world. The possibilities to do this kind of changes. Uh, so uh, what do we then say that the hang on method means or the field the line mm. method means? Uh, we think you should start to analyze your uh, productivity. Use the six big losses and, and do estimations. Do the timing, like the number first of each stop. Do the timing of each stop. And you will, I believe you will be surprised how many minutes you are losing per hour in just coming out from the six big losses. Uh, then estimate your current OE. And it's, it's uh, of course, uh, uh, we don't see that a lot. It's it's coming to, to measure. It's not done a lot in, in our industry from our experience. We think it, it's something that it's to be good. You have to know your productivity, but you can quite easily just from sales statistics get a quite rough idea what OE number you are running at. Absolutely. Uh, analyze your product assortment. Um, have a look uh, and try to group the products into different kind of brokes, like groups, small items, middle sized items, bigger items. Then we believe that you should use the old Pareto 80-20 rule. Uh, focus on the volume products first, uh, because there you will benefit mostly. Simplify, develop some kind of general hanging strategy. I mean, um, if you decide to go for a frame uh, system, you can use different uh, tools in a frame to hang a lot of different uh, type of objects in it. And this is coming from our Yeah, it will be complicated. It will take space. Mm. It will not be easy to handle. Uh, look at your working methods. Uh, look how many shifts you have. Can you arrange a pre-hanging station? Definitely worthwhile. Absolutely. And then calculate your savings effect that you have in the line yeah. with a new method. So uh, if we should have a look at uh, our case here, we um, we have one case um, and kick it up here. The sheet metal uh, product like the, this, which we have based our case on. Mm. Uh, and we have a typical daisy chain hanging situation, which is is quite common and compared to uh, uh, a solution from us called HQC. Mm -hmm. um, so if we look at this, um, we can see with uh, the daisy chain hanging, we are up to around 2000 items per hour. And with the HQC hanging that here, you come up to 9600 items per hour. So on this product with this hanger, we increase the output with five times, which is enormous figures. Um, if we then turn it into line hours and, and then we say if we are using the uh, daisy chain hanging and we are running that free shift, it corresponds to 5200 hours. In we, if we instead are doing the HQC, we are down to 1300 production hours. So in it, one in one year in one say. year yeah, yeah absolutely so it means that we can save up to 75 percent of our running time which is a lot definitely um if we say that the daisy shell and hqc hanging here has 80 percent oe number and and then we are again saying that this represents the maximum speed 
we can't hang it better than that. And then all the other factors are 80%. And remember, we said world class is 85. So it's a pretty conservative way of looking uh, to, to run it at 80%. Mm. And then the OE number for the daisy chain hanging corresponds to 70%. So quite dramatic uh, difference. Yeah. So with the uh, HQC, we can increase the OE number with 4.7 times. Yeah. And one of the reasons for this is actually because it goes much, much faster to hang on the HQC compared to the daisy chain hanging. When we do trials, we see that the daisy chain hanging on this product corresponds to around six seconds per piece per mm -hmm. item. When we do it, when we hang it here on the um, HQC, we are down to two and a half seconds per piece. And why is that possible, Peter? Well, to, there are two, two main may reasons. We have fixed hanging points here, which make that you can use both of your hands when you hang it, which makes you much, much faster as compared with, with hooks where you need to have hooks in one hand and the product in the other. Mm -hmm. And then we also, it's the renewal when you have to change the hanging points. On this bar, we have 12 hooks, which you change with one go. Here, you have to pick every hook in your hand. So mm -hmm. that's the main reasons. Mm -hmm. So uh, to summarize this up, the HQC is two and a half times faster. It goes mm -hmm. quicker to hang on it. Uh, we increase the output with uh, five times from 2040 to 9,600 hours, LA pieces per hour, and we save 38% of the total cost. Yeah, and that brings us into our new calculation model. Absolutely. So as a background, what we have done is that we have taken in quotations on, on lines and we have created uh, three types of lines, mm -hmm. the small, the medium and the large line. Um, they have the same object size. We are talking about three meter object length, one and a half height and 600 width. But the difference is, once again, the speed, one, two and three meter per minute. And in these uh, calculations, we also can, um, um, in this calculation tool, we can also calculate the energy much more uh, accurate. And we also did a quite thorough study on the energy consumption in a coating line. Uh, so we, we have very good grips on that. Absolutely. So we have full um, calculations uh, for purchasing and running these three type of lines. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, right now it's an internal um, uh, calculation tool, but later it will become available uh, uh, also to your customer in a bit more simplified version. Uh, but it's based on five components, which uh, we'll, we'll look into here. Uh, the fixed line cost, again, in this case, we have calculated with a medium sized automatic powder coating line. And the cost include obviously the investment, uh, the premises, the area it consumes, uh, and then production overhead, repair and ma maintenance, chemicals, etc. And here we have a huge cost saving of going from 24% to 5% of, of the total coating cost. And that's due to that we are running a much bigger volume. And here we should be clear. In this case, we have calculated that the free capacity uh, that we uh, create, uh, we fill with uh, more volumes and that will split the fixed line cost. We will come back and elaborate on that uh, without doing that later. Uh, then again, energy, a big thing. Uh, and when we looked into this, our findings, what was what we believed uh, it should be, that energy is very fixed. 
only typically 10 depending on the objects, but uh, in this, this case, I think it was 18%. <coughs> a very a tiny part goes into eating the goods. And that's because we have losses in radiation through the outer surfaces of ovens, etc. Uh, ventilation, and uh, then we also have heat leakages through the openings of the oven. So here, we reduce the energy cost per piece with 70%. Moving on to the blue color, which is the next big thing where we make a savings on, and that was which we already talked about. It's two times faster in this case uh, from daisy chain to, to uh, HQC. We talked about the renewal of, of hanging points. So uh, savings around two, two and a half times. Powder cost, we can discuss this. Uh, it will not be exact the same, but it will be small changes. It's the mm. same objects. Mm. So we Although that I believe that uh, you paint these kind of products more efficient on the HQC than you do on a daisy chain hanging. You that because that you are actually utilizing the powder in a better way. You yeah. don't have so much spray through, but. Yeah, the effect will not be big we think. And finally, the cost of the hanging point. Uh, and here we have calculated with no cleaning. Uh, so the standard hooks will go three laps and then we will uh, send it to metal recycling. Uh, the HQC, we run four laps and then the shaft here, uh, 120 laps and then to recycling. So here we will see an increased cost of the hanging point, but the, the, the savings outweigh uh, big time the, the cost increase. So the total uh, cost saving here is 38%. Uh, and if we take this down to, to uh, a more, yeah, what does it mean for in the reality for you? Uh, and let's say we have a batch of 20,000 pieces uh, here. It will require, as we have calculated, five people on the line. And with this density and two meters per minute, it will take 10 hours to run the batch. And then we, we are calcul calculated 15 euro cent, just as a fictive income for, for, for each of the uh, products that will give you a uh, revenue of 3,000 euros. <clears throat> and with the cost we have in our calculation, it will give a profit of 400 euro. And as we discussed, the OE number with chain hanging is 70%. Now, if we calculate it a bit different and just uh, say that we can't utilize the free capacity by uh, speeding up uh, the output. Actually, we can't use anything of it. Uh, what will happen? Yeah, it will be the same volume, obviously. Uh, we work with pre-hanging items and then we lift on the, the, the shafts on, on the line. It will demand 14 hours, man, man hours of, of pre-hanging. <coughs> And then it will just take us two hours to run this through the coating line. Uh, and the revenue will be the same, but still the profit will almost doubled. And that's because we turn off the line, save energy, and also for faster operation with, with the man hours. So man hours and energy are the two <coughs> big savings which actually justify to do it here. Then of course, the interesting thing is, can you utilize the capacity that you free up on the line? And here we have ma made a case where we don't calculate, which is maybe a bit stretched to say that at least in the short run that you can utilize 100% because mm -hmm. you don't have objects to run. But let's say you can find 
30% more volume to run through your line, what will happen? 30% uh, more with this hanging means that we run almost 20 more thousand pieces through the line. The same amount of people on the line, uh, but more hours to pre-hang. The double time on the line, <coughs> the revenue goes up and also the profit. So here we see a almost or, or more than five five times higher profit uh, when you can free the capacity. And obviously in the last, if you can utilize 100%, uh, you can increase the volume enormously uh, on these 10 hours and the <coughs> revenue and profit goes up in big time. So just some numbers to, 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 to reflect on the same effect in a different way. In the daisy chain situation, you have a revenue per hour of 300 euro. If you go to the HQC, the revenue becomes almost 1,500. Quite uh, impressive figures. I mean, I, I believe that a lot of coders know that around 300 to 500 euro is possible to have a revenue mm. per hour in a medium sized line like we are talking mm. about. But uh, think of instead having the, the revenue of uh, 1,400 euro. Yeah. Wow, it's a uh, dramatic figures. And again, to really look at it uh, at a financial perspective, uh, the, 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 the payoff of the investment increases dramatically if you can utilize the line. That's the big uh, effect um, here. Mm. It's a, Petr, it's a little bit interesting if we, if we look at the, the second uh, column, uh, free capacity used 0%. Here we see that uh, uh, we will use the line 2.1 hour. We will have th uh, three persons on the line. Mm. It means that three persons uh, will be around 24 hours working time, but 2.1 plus 14 is only 16 hours. Mm. So it means that uh, the basic staff on this line could actually both pre-hang yeah. and coat this all volume. The, this volume yeah. in it's one day. Yeah, it's another way to understand the, what the speed does yeah. the, to the operation. Uh, and just uh, as we mentioned, we, we calculate quite conservative with a very high productivity here of mm -hmm. 80%. Mm -hmm. So if we would uh, say that it's less, uh, and we, we also calculate three shift, full three shift. So if we go down and say it's two shift and we have an uh, OE of 60%, then the savings increase to 46%. Mm -hmm. So the saving, if, if the, ba the better it looks, the, the, the more the savings effect mm -hmm. you can do. Mm -hmm. And again, it's not, you, you, you mustn't look at the 100% case. I mean, no, no. You, you already make a savings if you even if you don't have a higher volume to run through the coating line. Mm -hmm. So Andreas, uh, could you give us a, an, an overview of what different hang, hanging system we yeah, have? Absolutely. Uh, we will do a quickie on this, um, but here is the hang on system that we have been talking about uh, today. Um, some examples of customers using this uh, in the lines. Um, we have the, the quick system, which uh, this uh, HQC corresponds to, uh, the one that we were using for this example. We also have HQS, uh, which is at another type of hanger, it's in the middle. And on the right side, you see the frame, and on the frame we have something called HQL, which is a bar for the frames where you can multiply or actually have much more items uh, hanging on the same bar uh, um, all the time. But the common thing that the, the denominator here is that it's fixed hanging points yeah. where you will be quick 
hanging and also the re renewal time for the hanging points. Absolutely. And then we have the flexible system uh, can also be hanged in, in a, a frame. It mm. can also be a shaft. Uh, but here uh, the interesting part is that you are using um, a socket with a masking and different kind of inserts that are replaceable. There is uh, two different type of sockets, so it means that we have both the BHL and the BH uh, insert. This is a typical, um, these kind of sockets are typical when we are uh, looking into a bespoke hanger for a single product or something like this. Um, we also have some some cases from the real world that we want to share share with you today because this is what we are doing all the time all the time to to help customers actually fill the line yeah uh, the upper left you we were talking about the uk case if we go down we uh, we have the polish uh, cases on the left side there we have the uh, pre how it was hanged before and uh, then we have how we hanged it. it. If we look at that picture, the left picture in the Polish case, on the left side, you see the hanger where the customer was using it, and it was actually not so bad. It was really good, but with uh, our system, um, we went in with uh, frame, suspension beam, uh, fixed hooks, about 45 degrees, and we could increase the productivity with 133% here. Mm. The second case from, from Poland is um, it was at a new line. Um, the customer had never been using uh, hangers before. We introduced our frame and uh, they wanted to hang, as you see in the lower part of the picture, uh, with the most difficult part facing the powder guns. But I, I said to the customer, I think as we can hang uh, in a more efficient way. We can hang them 90 degrees, as you see in the upper level and um, uh, we did so uh, we tested both uh, alternatives on the same hangers we even didn't change the, the powder output we were mm. just running them through and it was working uh, one thing that we we see when we are meeting customers is that they sometimes are a little bit afraid of doing changes in the in the the powder output, uh, working with the kilowatts, uh, working with the microamps to get a good uh, application result. Mm. Um, if we go up on the upper right side, we see a case from Finland. Uh, this was a little bit in, uh, it's a little bit different case because uh, here the, the company brought their operators down to us. Um, uh, we did trials here in our experience center. Um, they were extremely skilled in hanging, I must say. Yeah, they had uh, large volumes and, and were very good at it. Absolutely, and they did a daisy chain hanging mm. on these products and have done it for many, many years. Um, we tested uh, some different methods to, to hang these items and uh, in the end we come up with a HGS, as you see on the right side. And we could here increase the productivity with 60 percent and here it's very interesting also to note that here we don't we, we they continue to do uh, hang online so here we really see the speed difference because that's was all what it was into it they could hang it much faster with with the hqs yeah so uh, still working on the line mm -hmm. with the same speed and the good thing here is that the operator didn't feel that it was more difficult or that they were no. harder. It was just an easier way of hanging. Yep. If we go down to the next case from UAE, it's, uh, it was a company producing uh, electrical cabinets, uh, enclosures, and they were hanging uh, the items, the, the cabinets like you see on the left side. Mm. Uh, it's a lot of to talk about uh, with this hanging because uh, they have uh, hooks in hooks, which means yeah. that they don't get so good grounding or actually they can risk of losing all the grounding. Yeah. 
Instead, we went in with a, a, a standard product that we call a shaft beam, and we can also hang the items much closer to each other. Mm. So we increased the productivity with 100%, plus we secured the grounding. And in the end, it was much easier for the, for the guy in the, the box, yeah. in the booth, who do the yeah. painting to paint these objects. Mm. Um, so a little bit to summarize what we have been talking about today. Uh, fill the line, maximize the number of correctly coated products per hour. That we believe is one of the most important things you can do in your paint shop. Yeah, and we think that uh, it it should have an increased focus. Whether you use lean method, whatever, the, how you utilize your your line, we think will be more important for the future. Absolutely. Um, we are. Um, here for you. Yes. But we are also aware that uh, you have our, our hang on contacts on a much closer um, distance than Sweden. Mm. Uh, so uh, uh, if you go into our website, if you don't have contact with us today, you can go into our website and find your local representative. Yeah. Uh, we are in, in more than 40 countries around the world at the yeah. moment. Um, and increasing that uh, that numbers. Um, what else better? Anything else? No, I think it's um, that's all about it. What we wanted to talk. Uh, we, we we gladly have contact with you and, and discuss this thing uh, because it's something that we we uh, yeah we are working always with and and. Mm. Uh, we like to have a discussion because it's not black or white. It, it, you can have different view on it, so we happily do that. Yeah, and if we don't can uh, meet in real life at the moment, uh, we can take a Teams call uh, yeah. together and uh, try to utilize what is best for, you, for your line. Yeah. Um, absolutely, absolutely. So um, I have another thing also to say. I guess so. It's a little bit fantastic that we have been almost 70 people from 15 countries around the world yeah. uh, on this webinar. Yeah, we had we, we had some some problems with the sound here, but uh, we are standing in a studio that was finished on uh, Tuesday. Yeah, <laughs> so it's a lot of new technology for us and, and uh, but it's for us being global, we we think this is something, uh, one of our channels we can work with in the future. Absolutely. So uh, with this said, thank you very much for participating. Uh, let us keep in touch. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.